All right, welcome everyone. Uh, I don't have I don't have any announcements today. <clears throat> At least not that I remember right now. So let's just get to it. Hopefully, I don't know. Until I get to chapter one, I don't feel like I've started the course. So, okay. So today is September the 1st. Uh, there's already two people in here. I think I'm in the right Jamboard. Um, I think I'm managing to not mess it up today. The last, yesterday's Jamboard, I renamed to 831 and I put the correct link on Moodle. And I also, I, I think I put the PDF in there. So, um, functions. So, uh, so, last thing we did was compute the domain of a function. Uh, and we said the domain is whatever the function can eat. For example, if there's a vending machine with the little number pad, um, there's there's a function that inputs um that there's a function. Let me write that. On a vending machine. There's a function that for every number or code, they have letters, right? They have a letter and number. Uh, it outputs a snack or a curling iron if you're at the airport. Very weird things at the airport. <clears throat> um, so, um, the domain, I guess, is the is the set of codes that have some that that output something. So this is, I mean, not really a function of real numbers, but still a function nonetheless. So that's what we were talking about yesterday. Uh, the next thing I should talk about is the range. Hopefully, you remember. That the range from some place in your childhood memories. Range of a function is the is the set of of numbers. I, I'm going to say um, set that is the that is the output of something of uh, something. So I guess in this example. Um, In this example, so the range is all the outputs that I can get. Um, the range is the set of snacks that can come up of the uh, of the machine. I guess if they're stuck, they don't count as the range because they didn't actually come out. So that's the range. Um, so let's do another example. Ugh. I might I might need to zoom in to be able to write decently. Oh. My best. That's also, ah, there's no one in Jamboard. If you're in Jamboard, you don't have to be assumed in as I am. What is the range? The range. Of, um, let's make it 
make it really easy. So I gave you a function with a formula. Um, so what is the range of this function? How do, how do we find the range of this function? Well, um, I'm asking, which numbers could be the the results of of the results of doing x minus 1 squared in other words Um, which, so I need a letter for, for these numbers. It doesn't matter which letter, doesn't matter, uh, which letter I choose. This I'm already using X, let's call them Y. Which which y's we can get as as um, in this equation? So um, so for which y's um, does there exist an x? So, for example, is there an x for y equals to uh, four? Well. I would go I would go four equals x minus one squared. What's up? More chat. Yes. Oh. Yeah. X equals to three. All right. Thank you, Adam. Uh, x equals to three is uh, the answer. Is there any other answer? So if I solve this, I guess I would take square roots on both sides. Negative one, all right. <clears throat> so um, the square root could be positive or negative. So y equals one, and x equals two. Okay. So y is in the range as well. So plus minus two equals x minus one. This would tell you that x equals three or um uh, or negative one. So so there's two answers. So the answer to my question of does there exist an x is yes, there exists two. Um, if there exists two, there exists one. Uh, okay, next slide. <clears throat> Let's keep going. This was very professional. We have like, like in two two screens, like Twitch streamers. Uh, so, okay, Autumn. I don't know what answer. Um, 
by the way, the function, let me write it here, is x minus one squared bottom root. Um, x equals two gives me y equals one. So y is also in the range. Okay. Uh, what about y equals uh, two? Um, is there an answer for y equals two? Is there an x? No, no, actually, this is a no question. Um, so we're gonna have some fun. Uh, Ah, um, what equals two? Let's let's do a poll. Um, so if I go, this is as slow as my computer. Right, so um, if I did things right, oh yeah. So you see, um, you see a poll. You can vote. It's anonymous, so it's it's only for your own self satisfaction. Um, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you until I feel like a lot of people have answered, and then five seconds more. So I hope. Right, so you're not, I'm seeing how many people reply what, but you don't, so you're not being influenced. I got 16 answers. Are you, you're too young to watch who wants to be a millionaire, right? The audience, like, as I remember from my childhood, the audience tended to be right. Right, four people are missing. One of them is no that uh, that uh, who wants to be a millionaire had Regis Philbin hosting. I remember that, but he he died recently. Oh, I remember the Spanish host. I wasn't there for that one. Right, uh, everyone but one person voted, and I'm gonna assume that that person has technology problems. So, eighty percent of you voted yes. Interesting that the people in the chat were in the minority. Uh, the answer is yes. So when you generally ask for the range of the function, would you just find the inverse of the function? Pretty much. Uh, I was going to, I mean, you know what the inverse is from pre calculus. But yeah, which is what I'm about to do. Um, I mean, essentially, you're solving the same equation. So, but let's do this before I get into Dustin's question. So, um, I'm trying to see if there's an X, if this equation has a solution. So, I can do, I can do what I just did, which is, take uh, square roots on both sides and probably the the six of you that answered no were confused by it I don't know. maybe you forgot that two has a square root maybe you thought that i meant uh, that x had to be um, an, a whole number but it doesn't have to be uh, square root, uh, 2 has a square root, which is a number I like to call square root of 2. Then there's another square root, which I like to call negative square root of 2. And x equals 1 plus square root of 2, or x equals 1 minus square root of 2, are solutions. So, okay, 2 is in the range. Now, what I'm doing is not going to really take me anywhere because um, um, I have I have tried three numbers so 
So this is gonna I'll try three numbers. I have to take every real number. That's gonna take a while. So instead, um, I'm just gonna do what we do in math and just leave the letter there and say, so just, Let's just say um, I equals y or something. Um, or maybe leave. Well, I don't want to let me. Uh, for all at once which is why we use letters it's not to make high school students sad it's to not have to do infinitely many computations every every Tuesday so I'm trying to I'm trying to solve for X in this equation I'm gonna I've decided already to buy a better tablet Hopefully my handwriting will be as good as it was yesterday. Um, so uh, I'm going to solve this equation. And I mean, one thing that was valuable from doing this stuff is that I don't need to think to think how to solve this equation uh, because I know, I mean, this, the way to solve it is just uh, do the same thing. Take the square root. Um, I don't know, plus minus, <clears throat> and then add one. And then, and then what? What did I, what do I conclude from here? We arrange the all positive numbers since the answer will always be squared. That's a good point. So uh, Jake is saying, I'm on space again. Oof. Um, Jake is saying that if I have this equation, um, means that y is a square, so it must be, uh, it could be zero, but it's positive or zero because all squares are a negative because you take the square of a positive number you get a positive number you get the square of a negative number um you get a negative number so so what about the equation in the previous page which was um x equals one plus minus square root of y. I kind of, I mean, I solved it for every for every y, didn't I? What I wrote here, does it always work? Does it not? Because what Jake said makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, 
that sentence started missing their end as well. Someone help me. Yes, two solutions for every y because you have plus minus square root. But Jake just said that when y is negative, there's no solutions. All right. I'm going to try things until someone helps me. Uh, okay, Jake said there's a problem when y is negative. And I haven't tried any negative numbers yet. So let's try y equals negative 1. I'm solving negative 1 equals imaginary numbers. Yeah. So the thing is, that's, yeah. If y is negative, then square root of y does not exist. Um, so, um, because squares are positive, negative numbers have no square roots. There's no number that gives square negative one. And sure, uh, there's imaginary numbers, but um, for the duration of this class, there will not be because uh, we're, we're just working with real numbers. So if you know what imaginary numbers are, I mean, that's great, uh, but it's not, um, uh, the question, the question I'm asking is about real numbers, and and the whole course is about real numbers. So, indeed, we're going to say that square roots of negative numbers do not exist. It doesn't go past zero, right? Yeah, um, Isaiah makes a good point. Which, yeah, I'm going to go graph it. So. Um, if y is smaller than zero, this does not exist. If y is bigger than zero, um, means I have this solution to the equation. So y is in the range of f. The y is in the range of f as well. So the range of f. I said if, if it's negative, it's not in the range. If it's positive, it is. So the range of f is all numbers, all non-negative numbers. Uh, if I drew the graph, I would have another way to tell. Then we would have to be a negative symbol on the outside of the parentheses for y to go negative. That's true. Um, I don't know if that was a question or an answer to someone else. That might have been a, an answer to Isaiah. But let's uh, let's graph it. F of x equals um, x minus one squared. So, like Isaiah was saying, this this graph uh, doesn't go past zero. Um, he means it doesn't go past. Um, Height zero, right? Oh, my legs hurt. Um, so, how can I tell? Let's see. Can I? So, if I wanted to say, so for example, if y equals seven in the range. I can tell that that it is because I can draw this horizontal line, and I see it hits the um, it hits the graph at two points. Doesn't doesn't matter at least at once, and this point is the point. Whatever. I don't know what the x coordinate is, but I know what the y coordinate is. It's seven. So. Uh, whatever seven. So if there's a point in the in the um, 
in the graph with y coordinate seven, that means since the points of the graph are of the form x f of x, that's just what the graph is, that must mean that seven is f of x for some x. And that's all I need to know to know that seven is in the range. And you can see that for any any positive height, horizontal lines cross the, the graph, even for height zero. But if I do y equals negative four, it doesn't cross the it doesn't cross the graph, so this is not in the range. Or maybe it's on the range. Depends on your mood, I guess. Okay, so so that's another way to see the range. Uh, if you if you have a graph, like if you have access to the internet, and and this understands, uh, you know, if you have a formula that this program will understand, you can. Well, I guess I don't. I guess I don't know. Know that y equals negative four is not in the range because I don't know. For all I know, the graph could go like this and cross it seven times over here. Uh, but I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure. I, at least it helped me guess before I do the algebra. Or maybe once I learn calculus, I'll know a million ways to show that y equals negative four is not in the range. Okay, are there any questions? No. No. I think I'm getting it. All right. I hope it's not just you. What about the negative part of the parabola that the horizontal line? By negative, you mean the left part? Yeah. I mean, it's there. You know, the, the thing is, the thing is, if I go, if I go like this, if I only look at the positive part, I, I mean, they might have different range. They might have the same. If I start drawing these horizontal lines, this cross it, crosses it once. If I do both parts, it crosses it twice. The range, to know if you're in the range, you only need to know if the function takes this value at least once. So. I don't care if it's once or twice uh, for this question. So, so right now it happens to not matter. Of course, you know, if I was, um, this, I mean, if I go like this, this could be a different question. Now, what is in the range of just the negative part of the parabola? the answer would happen to be the same. Um, but the thing is, if there's two crossings or three or infinitely many, it doesn't matter. The only, the only thing I'm asking right now is, uh, does, it, does it cross the, the graph at least once? All right, I'm gonna think there's no more questions. Oh my God! Oof, it's eight or nine. Work. Oh. Okay. Um. Wait. So section one point one is kind of a niche. Myself. Everything they wanted to say. Um. So. I guess I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna sort of follow for a little bit. These wise defined functions. So sometimes this is something, I think this is a big topic in pre-calculus in one of those courses. Never taught them, so you don't really know what's in which one. So um, so sometimes, um, especially, when you're looking at real life and not a, and not at a calculus textbook, you find functions uh, like this. Um, 
take um, for a number if the input is um, number three return negative one and if the input is bigger than three return the input plus one so so this is a function because if you give me a number if i give you a number you can give me the answer if you say zero well it's a number that is at most three so i'm supposed to so the answer is negative one if you say negative two the answer is negative one if you say seven well then i say it's bigger than three so the answer is supposed to be seven plus one so this is definitely a function um but there's no there's no nice formula for this um i mean it wouldn't be a function it wouldn't be a function if i went something like this if i said if i gave you contradiction contradicting instructions then if i say 2.5 you don't know if you're supposed to return negative one or you're supposed to return the number plus one but this is definitely a function <clears throat> so the way we talk about this function which i'm sure you remember i would say i would write a curly brace and i would say this function is sometimes negative one and sometimes it's x plus one when it's in negative one, it's negative one if x is smaller than three. And most means it could be three, at least for mathematicians, and bigger than three. So um, now if I wanted to, if I wanted to say, <clears throat> compute f of two, I would look in here because I know that two is smaller than negative three, so the answer would be negative one. If I wanted to do f of four, I would look um, in here because four is bigger than three, and the answer would be four plus one, which is five. So I think piecewise defined functions are more annoying than difficult, but um, maybe I'm wrong. Very annoying though, don't get me wrong, um, because every time you basically, basically you see a function like this, it's double the work. So, what's the most important uh, piecewise defined function? <clears throat> and the most hated function of all, I'm pretty sure. The absolute value, that's an example of a function. Um, the absolute, yeah. Value of a number is well, first of all, we write it with bars. And it is the number without the sign. So it's always positive or, or zero. So what, what I mean, is that the absolute value of um, of one is one the absolute value of negative three is i remove the sign and i get three the absolute value of zero is zero the absolute value of um negative pi is positive pi the absolute value of square root of two is square root of two. 
the absolute value of negative three, is, uh, negative root of three is positive root of three. So when you get a, when you get a positive number or a zero, you return the same number. When you get a negative number, you return a positive number. So now I'm gonna ask you a question that I've realized is super controversial. Um, what about negative absolute value of two? I'm going to let someone else answer that question. All right, so I send you a poll. There's, it's multiple choice, so you can you can answer uh, you can answer yes and no if you feel like it. All right, now that half of you have answered, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, three quarters of you have gotten it wrong. I wanna know if that changes what the remaining half does. This is an experiment I'm doing. Oh my God, oh. You're all missing the move? Oh no. no. <clears throat> All right, 30 people voted. I'm gonna, you miss your chance if you're one of the three people who didn't vote. Oof! All right, so, um, okay, 30% of you said yes, which is the right answer. You can have that the absolute value of x is negative x. 70% um, of you said no, which is just wrong. Um, this was a great poll because I got you, I got you a lot of you to say wrong things, and you know nobody got you saying wrong things. Which, I mean, if I did it, I wouldn't care, you know. Um, but because hopefully, but hopefully by being wrong, we're all learning. And I'm asking this question because I realized last semester's class we're all confused. So. Okay, I'm gonna leave this for later. Uh, can we have the absolute value of x equals negative x? Well, uh, for example, if x is negative three, then the absolute value of negative three, like I said before, is three. I think you all agree in this. Um, and what is negative x? Negative x is negative negative three, which is three. And these are definitely equal to each other. So, and uh, by the way, this was the absolute value of x. So definitely x equals um, the absolute value of x in this case. So by the way, um, this question about negative the absolute value of two, um, well, negative the absolute value of two the, just means take a negative, a negative and put it in front of whatever the absolute value of two is, which is two. So that's the answer to that question. So in general, the answer to my other question, can we have x equals negative x? is that, that we, are people in the correct frame? I hope you are. No, you're not. Maybe, maybe you've, maybe you're looking at Zoom. <clears throat> so um, if, notice that if x is negative, this is, if x is a negative number, negative x, the thing is, what do you call a negative in English? You should be saying minus x, but nobody says that. And this confuses me a lot as an English learner. 
So uh, if x is uh, negative, minus x is uh, minus a negative number. And you put a minus sign in front of a negative number, like negative, negative 1. We don't like two minuses together without brackets in there. Um, that is a positive number. So this is the, this is the opposite. So this is really, you know, if x is negative three, negative x is a positive number. It's negative negative three, which is which is three is positive. Um, so this means that well, that the absolute value of x is, is well negative x because it's um, it's the opposite number out of the number and its opposite. It's negative x is the one that has positive sign. Um, if x is bigger than zero or equal, then the absolute value is just going to be itself. I think that's a lot easier to digest. So, in conclusion, the absolute value of x can be either x is if x is bigger than zero or negative x is x if x is smaller than zero. <clears throat> um, so that's what the absolute value is. It's, um, it's pretty, I mean, it's confusing. Signs are confusing. That's just, that's just life. Um, Oof. I'm gonna go draw some stuff. So so this is the function y equals x. Hopefully you've seen this function before. Um, and this is the same function only for positive numbers. So only the positive part of the function. Um, this is the function negative x. So this whole blue line is the function y equals negative x, so f of x equals negative x. Um, and if I just draw the part that I care about, right, I care about negative x for for negative numbers. Um, this is the, so, so the union of these two halves is the graph of the absolute value, which I hope you've seen before. If I draw absolute value in black, you see it's, I mean, it's the exact same thing. Um, so, you know, even even though this function, the blue one, has a negative sign on the on the left half of the picture, it's still positive. Um, the the um, the results of the function, which is the y corner, which is the height, um, is positive because it's I mean, positive height means you're above the the ground. The ground is the x-axis. Jared, do you have a question? You said, the last thing you said was, but, with one t. I'm a bit lost with the chat. It's better if you unmute yourselves and you, and you yell out. Okay. Um, so, so these are the two pieces of the absolute value, and this is the absolute value by itself. And you can see, just like the parabola before, it's always above the, it's on this half, uh, telling us that it's always positive, except at this point where it's zero. Just like we hoped. Um, okay, no, oh, I have four minutes. I'm, so we're gonna make use of them. 
Okay. So, so one thing, I guess, the, I don't know, I'm kind of following the book a little bit. In, in 1.1, it mentions it mentions symmetry, which um doesn't make sense here. I'm gonna talk about it later. Um, and then it mentions increasing and decreasing functions, which I think is probably a topic that they were just didn't know where to fit. Um, so let's just remind you what an increasing function is. Um, so a function, I mean, what, what does increasing, when do I say quantity is increasing, where today, you know, if today I have $10 in the bank and tomorrow I have 20, that's when I, that's when my money increased. My money increases when there's more money later than there was before. A function is called increasing if, um, if the the outputs increase that the let's move phrases the outputs increase as the values decrease increase as the input increases wait this only makes sense for functions of numbers um, and likewise Ooh. I can never copy and paste on the blackboard. So, um, it's a bit challenging to say what this means in a formula. Algebra, sorry. Uh, what, so, what does increasing mean? If it's increasing, if, um, well, well, so I need some letters here. I need to, I need to say whenever I have two points, two values of the function, one is bigger than the other. So uh, two values, which I'm going to call x1 and x2. Um, and I'm going to say, so one is bigger than the other. Uh, whenever x1 is bigger than x2. Uh, and I mean, what does this mean in a picture? In a picture, if I say that x1 is bigger than x2, that means that x1 is to the right of x2. But the fact that f of x1 is bigger, on, but n, means that f of x1 is above f of x2. Uh, and that means that on the, on the graph, we see the function go up, which is what we think of as increasing. And I guess tomorrow I'll talk about decreasing functions. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna stop recording, ask questions if you have them.